Привет, это ваши уши, Сеня. И Дима. У нас в гостях бельгийский режиссер, сценарист и путешественник Нигаля Гро. Подкаст записан на английском языке, ссылку на перевод вы можете увидеть в описании. Hello, Nicola. Hello. Please introduce yourself. So, I'm Nicola Gros. I'm a director from Belgium. I came to Magadan to start a research for a possible new film project. Um, before that, I graduated from film school in Belgium and I directed two films so far, one short fiction film and one documentary, a long feature. And now I felt the need to start something from zero again and over the past year I've become increasingly interested in um, the history mostly of um, Magadan Oblast and I felt that it was a good moment for me to come here just alone by myself to record my own first impression and collect some material, some stories, um, meet people and just see if my intuition to come here was right somehow. So that was my basic intention. I didn't come with any um, pre-conceptualized uh, idea of what the film or the project would be. I wanted to be um, open to just discover a new place, new people and try to experience this, uh, this from the inside as much as possible. Please uh, tell us more about your first impression about Magdalene. So my first impression... Um, so I have to say first that I came here somehow conditioned by um, some extensive reading of uh, most notably the writings of Shalamov. Um, what had a huge impact on me about Shalamov is not so much the way that he depicts the atrocities of the Gulag and um, all this um, dark, um, horrible sufferings, but it's more a personal interest in the way Shalamov uses writing like um, process that has to do with memory. So his writing is fragmentary and he writes from details that are the types of details that come to the surface of your memory from time to time and reveal um, or evocate a complete universe. And he uses, he uses this fragmentary form with, without storyline in a way that reflects how memory works, in the, in the way that I felt it and experienced reading it. And for me as a filmmaker, not only memory is an important interest in my work, but also shaping the film from a um, structure that is free from classical storyline is something that I'm extremely interested in. And Shalamov has also a very strong um, literary style, very cinematographic. Uh, the, the, the details are extremely clear and evocative, and there is almost a surgical precision in the way he describes some tiny everyday things that reveal a lot. And this is something extremely cinematographic, I think. So I came here with all this uh, on my shoulder, mm -hmm. let's say. And um, so to be honest, my first impression was when I was on the plane from Khabarovsk to Magadan and we were flying over the sea of Okhotsk and I was truly impressed and moved by the landscapes that I was discovering for the first time. and. A vast area of infinite snow and mountains and ice and frozen rivers and those 
um, dark trees pointing from the surface and almost no almost no human traces so it was the first time in my life that I saw something like this a, a landscape that had such a, a strong impact emotionally on me and I thought I, I thought that it was really cruel uh, cruel I mean to send people there mm -hmm. at that time people that had nothing to do with this area human beings to this vast empty landscapes um, to work in gold mines as a punishment for whatever so I arrived here with that first impression which was very strong and I felt okay now I have to to find my way through this and um, but of course it's extremely interesting it's also what I came for I, 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 I wanted to come out of any comfort zone by coming here and then I arrived to Magadan and very quickly um, I started to meet people very interesting people and find a lot of human warmth in this uh, cold area and this contrast was also very moving for me to, to, to develop a strong and sincere relationship with, uh, with some people and at the same time experience every day the harsh conditions for me it's even harsher because I never experienced in my life a winter like this so I'm very sensitive to this type of contrast and um, it's inspiring somehow Okay, so uh, overall, just to sum up, uh, this uh, theme was your intuition, right? You know, maybe this is more intimate, but I arrived at a point of my life when I felt the need to dig into what you can call sadness or melancholy. That is something that has a huge role in my life, even every day. And I felt the need to somehow experience it in a deeper way and understand it and maybe become friends with this feeling. At least understand it better. And to do that, you need to be in a condition where you can start a dialogue with yourself. And these conditions, you never get them in big cities. Um, like Brussels where I come from where every time you are distracted by something and everything has to be fast and you have so many problems to solve every day so it's impossible to find time to to start this deep dialogue with yourself so maybe it's a radical option but I felt the need to go to some place of exile very far away from home and reconnect myself to this and try to understand it better and um, my intuition my intuition was based on some readings of course it's, it doesn't come from nowhere but I felt that coming as far as I could from my place in the east direction would somehow help me to to connect with this and to understand it better and maybe transform it in a creative process and um, i had been thinking of coming to russia for uh, quite a long time if you if you if you could see my books at home half of them are russian books and there is something going on there that has been going on for a while there is something about the soul that i feel connected um, also my favorite filmmakers are Russian and so there is something going on that I had at some point I had the need to go and see by myself also Nikola, so I guess uh, there are a lot of uh, peculiar uh, differences uh, between your like what's called normal uh, mm -hmm. lifestyle and uh, life in here so uh, as you I've already said you were looking for a, a place of exile, yeah. And exile is very like I mean, uh, uh, 
special word word yeah. for that. So, um, in what uh, parts of everyday life uh, did you find that exile? You know, like some very maybe slight details which differ differ from your uh, normal way of life. So first, I've been in Magadan only for one month. It's uh, it's nothing, and now I'm. Now I have to leave, unfortunately, and I feel that there is a huge frustration that I couldn't stay longer this time. But again, I came here first by myself to validate some intuition. So that work is done and it's successful, if I can put it this way. And about about the details and the everyday life, If you want to talk about exile, I found it I find it more in myself than in the outside. Because it's me who who am on exile here. Uh, people here have their own life and their everyday life and they maybe they don't all have a sense of belonging to the place, but still this is the center of their life somehow. So it's for me that the exile is is an experience. Um, and also the of course the language is a barrier because I I cannot speak Russian or almost or just a little bit um, but still uh, the cultural shock for me is not is not as huge as when I was um, researching for my documentary in Laos where really there was a huge gap to to cross the cultural shock was much bigger than here here it still feels like europe for me and maybe it's a bit strange to say but and i quite quickly found people who can speak english and with whom i have uh, deep conversations so i don't feel so much isolated either but still there are moments but that has to That has to do with me, moments of sadness and loneliness and things like this, but I came to find this as well. So I am also learning to deal with it better, I guess. And of course I'm writing a lot. Um, impressions and details that I, that I see from just walking in the streets, um, But it can be really small images that struck me for... Can you give some examples? Yes, for example, with the, the first day I wrote a little note about a little girl that was... Um, so she was wearing a big uh, coat and um, she was putting her head with her cap under uh, water that was dripping from the roof of uh, some TV building. And I don't know what I wrote about this, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but it was a detail that I found interesting. And um, so it's this type of detail that seem irrelevant, but maybe somehow they will associate with something else in the, in the, in the process of writing and create something else, something deeper somehow it's uh it's it's open but also the um, so i walked a lot in this city and around and there are the stray dogs there are that are following you or bark barking at you everywhere and there is the the feeling of being surrounded surrounded by a huge infinite landscape and it's something that I don't have in my hometown and for me people here I are quite lucky that they can just walk to Nagayev Bay and see such beauty and I felt it was on the third on the third day of my arrival I was just walking alone exploring and I went to Nagayev Bay and I sat on the beach And I stayed there for one hour, just looking at the at the bay. And 
um, of course there was the sunset so it was even more uh, moving but I felt at that moment that okay now I'm really here I arrived and I think that symbolically it's also a good place to arrive it's very moving it was a great moment of consciousness for me and after that I was here so these are just some impressions and they, they, they build up gradually they, they take shape gradually also in my memory what is going to be left of this of course there are many notes there are many pictures there are many persons that I met whom I will keep in touch with and I know already that I will leave um, a piece of my heart here if I can say that and uh, all of it will will be distillated in my memory and I will see what's going to come out of it. It's only the first step of a long process. I, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have experienced it in that way if I was unaware of the fact that Nagayev Bay was the place where the prisoners were arriving mm -hmm. by boat. So it's also because you know that you have this background mm -hmm. that you can experience the present moment in such a moving, overwhelming way. And I felt it was really a moment of connection to the place, to the memory of the mm -hmm. place and to myself. Nicolia, tell us please about the filmmaking process. Okay, I can say more about my own approach to filmmaking because I have studied in film school for five years and um, even though, of course, I learned many interesting things, I found for myself that I had to find my own way because it's you learn many things, but it's also some kind of system or prison and each film should be um, a piece of art in itself and it's it's wrong for me to say that there is one way to make films it's it's not true at all each film demands its own way its own approach and it's something that I'm really uh, carefully involved with because I just don't want to make the film the way that I was taught because it doesn't it doesn't work with the with my projects so far and if if I'm forced to do it it brings frustrations and sufferings uh, and I've experienced that on my short film which I I made after school it it's um it's a strong experience because it was it took me three years of work for a short film of twenty four minutes so of course the writing takes the longest um, period of time and uh, the funding part so that's uh, you have to be patient and you have to keep faith because you submit your work your script to some film commission and when you do that it's like you stand naked in front of them and you wait that they tell you yes or no and uh, through this process it's harder than what you have experienced in school and now it's it's real life and it's about um, it's about what you as a filmmaker, as an artist want to express and it's going to be judged by others and unfortunately to make films you need money and uh, filmmakers are poor persons usually uh, there are many ways to make films but if you want to live up to your ambitions usually you need some money anyway so it takes a lot of time and patience and faith but still for this short film I was following the industry method let's say like this even though the film is very intimate and very personal um, so for the when we when we managed to gather a certain amount of money that was sufficient to make the film um, 
my producers and me, we decided on a shooting schedule. And that was a fight between me and them because I needed at least 12 days. They could give me only nine. All this is, uh, of course, money questions. Um, but these discussions already shape what the film will be. And it's not, some, not something that you can uh, make compromises with because even though it will stay in the background and it's not, it's not going to be screened, this type of discussion, it's, it is going to have a huge impact on the final result. Uh, and unfortunately, I had to, I had to make compromise on the shooting time. So I had only nine days, and it was uh, an extremely painful experience because to to achieve my my goals for every scene, I I don't want to. If there is one place where I don't want to put my ambitions down is during the shooting. It is impossible to lower your ambitions at that moment. Otherwise, otherwise you're just going to make shit and be unhappy with yourself. Um, but to, to make these ambitions uh, real, it takes a lot of time also during shooting. But during shooting, you have a crew, you have many people asking you questions constantly, and there is a schedule and you have to respect it because if you don't respect it, you will have to pay uh, your team more. Even if it's not your problem as a director, still you are imprisoned in that system of hierarchy. And um, it's, yeah, it's a, it's an industrial process somehow. And it was a real fight. So I had to make sacrifices, cut out scenes from the script, and hopefully I didn't sacrifice something too important and I'm happy with the, with the film in the end. But this type of fight is something that I, I would like to not live again in the same way. I would prefer to shape my method in a different way in advance so as not to fall back into the mainstream system. Because anyway, my films are not part of the mainstream system. And I found much more uh, creative freedom in the making of, a doc of the documentary. So for that film, I was in a remote village in Laos. We were only three people in my crew and we had a huge amount of time. So we could decide day by day what we were going to film and, and test it and improve it with the people in, a, in constant uh, exchange. And, and the relation was, of course, based on a strong trust and we had this space for creativity and so the experience of documentary was much more rewarding for me and the film itself i can say that i'm more proud of it um, but it was shaped in a different way and there in my remote village in Laos, there would be no producers to come and tell me, okay, now you have to make this shot, now you have to make this one, or otherwise you will, you will be out of schedule. So it's a freedom experience that, I, that changed me also on an artistic level. And for the next film, I think I would like to find a method that is closer to documentary than to the industrialized method of fiction but you can make fiction with this documentary method it's possible it's um, something that has to be carefully thought about but it's possible our last question for today uh, would be a traditional question to all of our guests it considers just one word trasa yeah so tell us please about your experience or some knowledge about trust, may, may perhaps some of your trips mm -hmm. to trust. Okay, 
Trasa was like um Trasa for me the way I experienced it this time was like a dream in the snow a dream awake or also sleeping in this vast landscape frozen by snow where there is almost nothing else to do but sleep or dream and it was a very revealing and inspiring experience for me even when you do nothing or you are just blocked by the snow or by the cold there are many things going on inside and i wrote a lot about this it's uh, it has a lot to do with introspection every time even when i'm uh, meeting people and collecting their stories so that's a work that is oriented to the outside but at the same time i'm processing it and the introspection part is the hugest part so trasa for me was experiencing the distance and the extreme isolation because we can say it i think of um this endless unique road going through this monotonous landscape that doesn't look like it's made for humans and still there there are some some portions of livable uh, spaces where it's warm inside where you have a uh, small apartments decorated with flowers like they want to keep the summer inside and there are flowers everywhere from the ground to the ceiling everything is full of flowers and it might sound strange but for me it was something very revealing because it helped me understand um how you keep the life inside and when the outside is so cold and so inhabitable and of course the vision of um the abandoned settlements is also very moving for me it's uh, when you say trasa in my head it means trace more than road and i see traces of living beings living human beings and everyday life was there and family life was there and what is left of it what is left of the um, this warmth now when the windows are open and just battered by cold wind so it's not enough to make a film but it's strong impressions that will remain for sure and that will associate with each other in in some way during the writing process and i had the chance to go on that road to Yagadnoe with um three friends new friends who um, whom I shared w- with whom I shared very great moments of e- everyday life as well and long talks kitchen talk and all these kind of things that create a unique experience and it will stay for sure I I don't know what will come out of it but it will stay warm inside because of this but it's like a dream and maybe it's the good way to experience um life for me when i came back to magadan after yagodne it felt it felt like a big city and uh, the snow was not there yet and uh, everything was bathed in orange light and i felt also that i had already a strong attachment to magadan so for me that's what trasa means and to come back to my um to my background readings and everything of course they are also part of my memory i know about the gulag i met people to talk about the gulag but this is just an entrance door to something that you might call collective memory it's like it's more a pretext for me you i know that i can enter to collective memory through that door and it's interesting anyway 
to collect this type of stories, even though I I already know that the film will not be about the gulag, it will be something more personal and probably it will be a fiction work. But to create a fiction work you need to have a huge amount of material, as much as in documentary, according to my uh, method again. If I don't like this word, but let's say it. Because the film, it's like the... The film that you see is like the tip of the iceberg. And all the research, all the memories that create it are hidden. You will not see it, but you need it. And it's really... I think the iceberg image is revealing in, in my approach. And it fits well to Magadan as well. But just to come back to this um, gulag issue, I also I also understood very quickly that it's um, it's an image that how to say it's not the image that people here want us from outside to have of Magadan, and I'm aware of this. I and I know that unfortunately it it's what still um, lingers in collective opinion about Magadan even when I was uh, talking about my uh, project to come here with my Russian teacher who is from Moscow she told me why are you going to prisons and I I knew already much more than her about Magadan and about this region and uh, as I said Gulag is just an entrance door to collective memory, but it's not it's not the image that I want to give of my experience here and the, of my, my vision here. I'm much more interested in the, the present and the, the warmth in the present and the people in the present, of course. So it's there. It's there because you your past is there. It, it creates the layers uh, underground the present but I'm not here to make another documentary about Gulag it's uh, I, I, it's better to leave that work to journalists or historians but my work is to is to cr create an experience of images and sound that will resonate emotionally with uh, with the viewer and be as sincere as I can to myself as well. What this experience will be, I don't know yet, but it's the process has started and it won't be long before I come back to to continue the research and the immersion. Mm -hmm.